The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rose. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 25th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. However, today, it's just past 8 o'clock in the morning. So if you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you have a question and you're listening between 8 and 9 and you can't call in, I've got your back. You can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, for all our early birds inside the tiger's den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. So we begin our morning at 8.05 a.m. We've got a mixed bag here with regard to equity futures. you got the S&P ES Mini down 3. NASDAQ is off 33. Dow is down 12. And the E-Mini Russell is up 80 cents out there. Spot Volatilix is trading up 28 pennies, but it's still below its 50-day exponential moving average. That provides buyers with the edge. In Asia last night, it was a mixed bag as well. You had the Shanghai up 34. Hang Seng up 128. The Nikkei finished down 70 points. Nikkei confirmed a sell the D-point top. Yes, it will take those charts in a few moments uh, over in uh, uh, Europe right now. We're just taking a look at the DAX and the FTSE. we got a mixed bag there, too. DAX is trading lower by 59 points. FTSE is trading up by 24. Now, one of the first things I do in the morning when I, I get up and uh, take a look at on my screens, I'm taking a look at what the DAX is doing and what the NQ is doing. Both of those are very directionally correlated out there. So it makes sense. you got the DAX trading lower. Of course, you want to understand what the message of the DAX is. Is it been trading? Did it open higher and trading low? Where is it at? We're going to take a look at that as well. You've got gold up seven bucks, silver's down 14 pennies. So a mixed bag in metals out there. A U.S. dollar index is basically flat out there. We're going to take a look at that as well. So let's do this here. Let's. Um, I mentioned the correlation. So before I change screens out here, I mentioned the correlation between the DAX and the um, and the, and the NDX 100. Now I don't have the NQ up here. I've got the NDX, the cash indice, with the DAX uh, cash indice in essence below that. Now the bottom panel here, this is showing us the directional correlation. I'm using a three-day average, bars that are above zero, which are the majority of the bars out there, tell you about a directional correlation, meaning the DAX trades higher, the NDX trades higher, and vice versa. Uh, so we know there's a solid directional correlation there. Let's go see what's going on in the international market. So we're going to change our screens. We're going to we're going to take the advantage of doing an early show like this to give you a feel for how I assess the markets and the information I provide to subscribers out there. So one of the things we look at first is the uh, uh, what went on internationally out here. If we take a look at the uh, Shanghai, I'm just going to simply expand out the chart. We can all take a look at this way. You get to see Stevie's patterns as well. Back here, when I say back here in uh, the February 24, 24 time frame, we had a nice roads momentum indicator bottom. Led to a very nice Nice rally. Now, what we have out here, as price was pulling back and testing that area, back in the trading session of September 18th, we went ahead and completed a TD9 count bottom. Uh, prices rallied. We had that nice rally, um, not last night, but the night before, with price taking out that TD9 count breakdown resistance level. We had a gap to the upside, even though a candle shows as a shooting star. It's really not. Why is it not, Stevie? Because you really have to take into account this gap here. And if we went ahead and closed this gap, 
and just simply put in our own uh, body of the candle, that would not be a shooting star. So it does look like the uh, Shanghai wants to continue its rally to the north. If we take a look at the Hang Seng, I mean, look at this rally out here. This formed an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. And today was bar number eight of a TD9 count as prices coming into a prior TD9 count from back in May 20th. So this is likely to go ahead and uh, confirm a TD9 count pattern tonight, complete that pattern tomorrow night out there. The question is, will price be able to take out that high, that high being from the high of May 20th, 19706? Likely not. And likely uh, we've got that TD9 count top with price pulling back to test support, which is 18111. We take a look at the Nikkei. The Nikkei had an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. You can see that last night's uh, candle was a shooting star candle. That confirms that sell the D point top. Price should now pull back to support, which for the Nikkei is in the 36,947 level. With regard to the FTSE, I cannot get a good feel for what it is doing. It has been oscillating back and forth. The oscillator and change line out there. How about that? Oscillating around the OUL. And I just don't have a very clear signal on what the FTSE is doing. It's got a TD9 count top that is still in place back from May 15th out there. If we take a look at the DAX, so I mentioned that the DAX and the NASDAQ 100 have got that, the NDX have got this directional correlation. Thank you, OB1. He's the one that shared that with us, and we can see it really in action. We took a look at that directional correlation. We take a look at the DAX. What the DAX did last night was, it. Uh, now the DAX has a actual um, uh, rose momentum indicator top, and it, uh, it, it formed that pattern back on September 20th when we formed that bear sash candle. Now, resistance out here for the DAX, in order to negate that signal, price has got to close above the high from September 19th, that high, 1904.96. Now, what price did this morning was it gapped to the downside when it opened, and it's been trading higher ever since out there. So we really need to go take a look at the DAX intraday charts to get a feel for what's going on. So I said that, so I'm not going to just leave you, you know, hanging there. We should go take a look at the DAX charts and get a feel for what they're communicating to us. Now, this is the question. Which one of these is going to give us the DAX? I've got two. Uh, mm, yeah, that wasn't it. So Stevie selected the wrong one at first. Sorry about that. But uh, we'll get the correct one in a, a moment up here. We want to take a look at the DAX and its intraday charts. So if you give me my, that was more of a, about a correlation that's going on. So I think that was, geez, I hope I don't do this again. No, we're good. Okay. So now what this is going to provide you and I, it's going to provide you and I with the intraday charts. What we're looking for here from an intraday standpoint, I mean, we've seen the market rally. Uh, the DAX rally since it's open this morning. We want to see if there's any kind of intraday topping signals. And the shortest term time frame that I'm looking at out here is the 30 minute. So we can see when price gapped down this morning, it gapped down to prior resistance, which was that TD9 count breakdown level, uh, old resistance now being support, and it's trading right into its oscillator and change line. So at 8.11 in the morning, we don't know if this rally is going to continue out here. If it does close above 18.944, is what we'll call it, 18.944, on any 30-minute bar, right now we've got about uh, 19 minutes left in this bar. But if price does close above that, that would then tell us intraday-wise that the rally should continue. So that's what that chart is telling us. Let's look at any of the other intraday charts, see if there's any other signals out here. 65-minute chart is up at resistance. It's also going change on. Same thing with the 130, same thing with the 195 out here. On a daily time frame, you know, we already took a look at that. Um, what is this here? Give me a second. So this actually, is that true? Did this also, I gotta go back and take a look at my other chart. No, it's not, it's okay. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't uh, cross above. So it just has that road momentum indicator top out there. So you've got the level to be watching. This is gonna be important really if you're an intraday trader, uh, especially if you're trading the NQs out there. So you wanna watch the DAX, you wanna watch that 30 minute uh, oscillator and change line. That is resistance, but if price closes above resistance, then you should see that rally continue further out there. What else do we want to take a look at this morning? Just to get a feel for what the markets are communicating to us. Why don't we go take a look at, let me close this out. Let's go take a look at what's going on inside of the uh, US dollar index out here. We'll take a look at the currency pairs that make that up. If you give me a moment, we'll get right there. 
Here we go. So now we've got the U.S. dollar index. Um, and you can see we're taking a look at the euro. So what's the euro doing? The euro is traded above yesterday's high, traded above its green oscillator and chain line. That would suggest to you and I that the rally should continue. However, when we open up this chart here, we're going to see that what the euro is doing, it's trading into a TD9 count top out here. That TD9 count top took place on August 23rd. So therefore, if the euro is really going to get some mojo, it needs to close above 1.1201. We're at 1.1196. So that's the level you want to be watching, whether it's today or it's tomorrow. Why? Because if price closes above that, we're going to get another A to B equal CD pattern to the upside inside the euro. If the euro is getting stronger, what will the U.S. dollar index do? Likely get weaker because the weighting for the euro inside the U.S. dollar index is 58%, 57.6% to be exact. What's going on with regard to the yen? The yen formed that nice TD9 count bottom that's been rallying ever since. It's going to go target the 145.55 level. Now, when in this chart here, as the yen is moving higher, it's actually getting weaker so you got a little bit of an offset and the u.s dollar index will be getting stronger so right now the euro is putting weakness into the u.s dollar the yen is putting strength into the u.s dollar in the case of the great british pound which is also rallying in other words as this moves higher it's getting stronger u.s dollar index is getting weaker it's going to go ahead and form a td9 count top today it'll complete that pattern tomorrow price should pull back to the 133 15 level. In the case of the U.S. dollar index, it negated its TD9, its Roads momentum indicator bottom by closing below the low of August 27th yesterday. Right now, price is just trading up into its oscillator and change line. This suggests that we see a further rally inside the euro. The U.S. dollar index could move lower. So the key is going to be that euro. Watch that level that we talked about. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. 
Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. If you're listening, uh, we are recording today's show uh, between 8 and 9 in the morning. We'll try to make this as pertinent as we can for you for the 11 uh, to 12 replay. But you're getting a feel for really how we assess the uh, markets early in the morning. As I, and what you're looking at are really newsletter charts uh, that, that cover a wide range of instruments. For example, here's the uh, soft commodity complex out there. We've got wheat, soybeans, corn, coffee, sugar and cocoa, everything you need to start your morning out there. So if we take a look at the wheat contract out there, it's got a nice Rosemontum indicator bottom. It's turned into an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. The one-to-one -one price projection on wheat is in the 622 level. We can see it's 612.75, price will run into, run into resistance right now. It's dealing with profile, just consolidating with inside its profile, but it does have an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, as does soybeans. Now the soybean target out here is up at the 1071.75 level has not completed that pattern. It should continue that rally. If we take a look at corn, corn right here right now is if it could close above the high from um, the trading day of March, uh, September 6th out there, 416, that will trigger an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside. We've got coffee out here that's got an A to B equal CD pattern to the upside. It's price target 283.05. Uh, out here, uh, if we take a look at uh, sugar, so sugar is going to go ahead and complete uh, this contract, the March 2025 contract, a TD9 count top today. Uh, what price should do is pull back the tested size and change line with these TD9 count tops. With the fact that we've seen just nothing but a series of higher lows out here, price not even gotten down to the prior low, it makes this TD9 count a little bit suspect. So I wouldn't close out the sugar trade, but I would have a stop in place. And that stop would probably be at this stage here, it'd be below yesterday's low out there. Or take a look at a 10-day um, average true range out there. That would be another way. With regard to cocoa, cocoa is just simply consolidated with inside its uh, daily profile. Support at 7531, resistance 7957. Now, one of our debtors is actually trading sugar via the ETF Kane. So we're going to put those charts up on our screen out here. Now, Kane, when you're trading those ETFs, you really want to understand what is the makeup of it. In this case here, it is the March 2025, March 2026, and May 2025 futures contracts. All those are in the upper left hand, are up in the upper row panel out there. And you can see that each of them have got that TD9 count topping signal. Kane is going to do the same thing today. Now, we look at the intraday charts here with regard to sugar and how they're trading. We can see that you've got Rhodes Mintum indicator tops, at least with regard to the March 2025 contract. You'd watch the $23 area out there, see if that holds as support. If we open up this chart, this is the 25, this is the 30 minute time frame chart out here. One of the things that I'm noticing is I don't see closes below. Well, I did see some closes below the bottom of the profile, 30 minute basis back here from about 12 noon back on uh, September 23rd for about a, an hour or so out there. But you want to right now prices that support if cl price closes below that level. By the way, that level I didn't give it to you is at the 23 even. Stephen, you're likely to see at least lower price in that March 2025 contract out there. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to close this chart out. I'm then going to go ahead and uh, modify the data feed that I have. So it's going to just take me just a second to do that out there. So I've got different data feeds for different instruments out there. Now we're all set. We had a question that came in uh, last night, and the question was from Robert. And Robert's interested in taking a long trade inside of the 30-year Treasury uh, via TLT. So we're going to go take a look at the 30-year Treasury charts. Momentarily, those will be popping up on your screen. And here, we're going to look at the multi time frame set of charts out there. The multi time frame charts, you know, give us a feel of what's going on on the play by play from an intraday standpoint. With regard to the daily time frame chart, though, we can see that's populated on my screen. It's chart number two from the right on the upper panel. And you'll see the daily time frame has both a Rhodes Mintum indicator top as well as a TD9 count top. Now, two tops don't make it stronger than one. It just means you have two patterns confirming a top out there. What price did yesterday, Robert, was it got back and tested 
the uh, its breakout level at 124.02. As we speak right now at 8.22 in the morning, price is trading below the bottom of that daily profile. Don't know if that's going to hold the support. It most certainly did by day's end yesterday. But if price closed below 124.02, uh, you're looking for to take a trade for a couple of weeks or so. You're going to have to be patient out there. If we do see a close below the bottom of this profile, something we haven't seen since July of last year, I'm sorry, July of this year, that's going to suggest that lower price is coming. Now, that's the daily time frame chart. Let's look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart has an A to B equals CD to the upside, takes us up to the 130-ish level. Let's not worry about that. Let's worry about what we're doing right now. On a Wednesday, we are trading below last week's low out there. That suggests to Stevie, as we take a look at the daily time frame chart, that what price really wants to do is get back and test that oscillator and change on a weekly basis. That's at about 123... 15 as we speak right now that's a potential buy area i say potential robert because if price closes below that then we're looking to move back to the top of its profile likely and that's in the 121 15 level if you look at the monthly time frame chart we can see that price is trading into a bearish structured profile so this is a big sell zone from a monthly time frame not a surprise that it found resistance not a surprise that we've got that td9 count top if we look at a 30 minute time frame chart out here if this 124.02 level is going to hold, then the TD9 count pattern that's in place right now, it completes in another seven, it confirms another seven minutes. And then at 9 a.m., that will go ahead and complete that pattern. So whatever that low is, that's something you'd want to monitor. Why? Because if price starts trading below that, that tells us that we head to lower ground, which is really the signal of the 60-minute time frame chart, the 120-minute time frame chart, the 240-minute time frame chart, the five-hour chart, all are suggesting that we want to head lower. So what I would do, Robert, is today is not the day to be taking that long-term trade. You're asking for a buy point. We really need to see how these charts play out here. So right now, they're suggesting lower price watch that 30 minute time frame chart to give you a feel intraday at least what's going on and i'd say i'd have to wait i would wait at least to see what's going on with the weekly chart and see whether that oscillator and change line level holds or not so robert i hope that provided you with the information now i'll go pull up the tlt for you just so we can see what its message is so if you give me a moment we'll get back to uh, that chart let's get that fired up I think I put this in here last night, so it should be relatively smooth. This should be the TLT that pops up on our screen, and lo and behold, it's not. What does Stevie do? Did I hit the wrong thing? I did. Sorry about that, folks. I Oh, no, I didn't. That's really weird. Well, doesn't matter whether it's really weird or not. We're going to put the TLT in here, and we're going to see its information. Now, where we saw the 30-year yesterday get down and test and reject its breakout level, in the case of the TLT, it got close, but no cigar. Uh, the cigar would have been at 97.81. We didn't get down there. I, uh, you know, you've got a TD9 count top here as well, but I'd really be making my decision of taking a long uh, or taking a short based on what's going on and basically what is the underlying instrument out there, and that is the 30-year treasury. So be patient out there, Robert, and uh, keep writing back and be happy to take a look at that for you. In the case of uh, the next instrument that we're going to take, the uh, next request, we just have a couple of them, uh, is from Hector and Patty. They're over in the West Coast, so they're up very early that's 5 25 in the morning i got that email maybe about 20 minutes ago the early bird does catch the worm out here and the question is uh, what's the message of the daily and the monthly time frame chart for the gdx so let's go take a look at the monthly chart here for the gdx what we know that it's doing is it's trading into a couple of different swing points the first one that it's trading into hector and patty is from april of 2022 482 million shares were traded at that uh, at, at that uh, at that month, and this month we are at 348. So 348 is going into 482. Looks to me like we're coming into that swing point lighter. So you've got resistance there. You want to watch that resistance level at 4161. We take a look at the other swing point that is trading into. It's the swing point high that takes us back into August of 2020 volume there 664 million we are certainly moving into that swing point with lighter volume we'll continue our assessment of the gdx as soon as we get back from this break If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. 
For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. 8.30 in the morning is when we're recording today's show. You've got the mixed bag with regard to U.S. equity futures. The S&P's off two. NASDAQ 21. The Dow is down nine points. So basically flat out there, the Russell's up 90 cents. But look at the monthly chart here for Hector and Patty of the uh, GDX. The GDX is trading inside its all-time swing point high, doing it with much lighter volume. But it close above that uh, low of that swing point, August of 2020. Uh, that is at the uh, 42.27 level. You know, it would be certainly a bullish outcome out there. So that's the monthly chart. It's got an A to B equals CD pattern that's completed the one to one level, but it needs a bearish reversal candidate to confirm a top out here. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, weekly time frame chart is very bullish. Why is it very bullish, Stevie? Because it's had a Rogemintum indicator top. And all that, uh, and what price did last week was it closed above the high. The high was 39.97. We closed above that last week. Negated that pattern. It has roads momentum indicator signals, but those need bearish reversal candles to confirm a top. We're trading above profile resistance. We're trading above its oscillator and change line. The weekly chart is very bullish out there. Well, how about the daily time frame? Turns out that the daily time frame. I went ahead and negated a TD9 count top. That's a TD9 count top that formed out here back on August 20th. That high out there was at 39.97. Uh, we closed above that. We negated that signal out there. There's no other topping pattern on a daily time frame that I have for the GDX out there. The GDX on a daily basis is suggesting higher price out there. Now, here comes the caveat. What do you mean, caveat, Stevie? Well, let's go change screens here for a moment. We started off our day. Take a look at the correlation between uh, the uh, DAX and the uh, G and the uh, NDX 100. Now we're going to go take a look at is the correlation between gold and the GDX. Who's the horse? 
and who's uh, who's the head, who's the tail out here, so to speak? Well, if we take a look at the GDX, which is up at the top portion of the screen, center portion is the uh, December gold contract, and the bottom portion is, again, a three-day correlation, directional correlation. Well, what you see here is the majority of those bars, we'll call about 95%, maybe even more, uh, of those bars are above zero. So over a three-day average, this is really directly correlated. Well, Stevie, why the heck did you do that? Why did you show me that? Well, the reason I showed you that is because we're going to go take a look at those white background screens. We're going to go to a different set of panels out here. They are going to be important panels to monitor, and that's going to be gold and silver. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart for gold, we're going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top today. Remember, we looked at the GDX, and Stevie said, I don't have any kind of topping signal at all in place. Place. That was a true statement. But we also looked at the directional correlation between gold and the GDX, and gold is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top today. Now, in the case of gold, much like the GDX, uh, really ever since the trading day of September 19th, the last four or five trading days, while well, we've seen our higher lows, higher highs out there. So today is somewhat of a small body to candle. Whatever the high ends up being inside of gold, if we close above that tomorrow, tell us about a strong directional correlation. I'm sorry, talks about a strong not directional correlation, a strong momentum move to the upside for its daily time frame. If we take a look at the weekly time frame out here for gold, its message is nothing but bullish. There is no topping signal in place. It would need a bear. Well, let me take one more quick peek. Yeah, no, no real topping signal uh, in place as we speak right now. We need a bearish reversal candle to confirm a uh, top out there. So who's driving the boat here? Is it daily, the daily time frame? We'll have better feel for that, I think, on uh, uh, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday out there. But you've got a TD9 count top in Goldilocks for its daily time frame. And guess what? We got that exact same pattern going on in the case of high ho silver out there. So a TD9 count top should result in price pulling back to support, 31.58 out there. If in fact we get a pullback inside of silver and the GDX out there, Hector and Patty, then what you should expect and anticipate is a pullback inside of the GDX. Support for the GDX on this daily time frame right now is at 40.23. 3996 out there those would be the support areas so hope that helps you out with regard to the weekly and monthly chart assessment for the gdx but also throwing in that little caveat that directional correlation between gold and silver each which have daily tops as we speak right now the next thing that we're going to go take a look at is for john inside the tiger's den he'd like to take a look at the daily and the weekly time frame charts for light Sweet crude so we'll get to pop up the uh, november contract for it here we go, and let's go take a look at the daily and the weekly charts. Let's start with the weekly chart, because I think that's the one that's most important as we speak right now. Why is that, Stevie? Well, what we saw here was we saw an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. It confirmed that by the D point pattern uh, last week when it formed a, a three river morning star pattern. What that told you and I was that we should expect and anticipate that price would rally up towards its oscillator and change line. Well, that is in essence exactly what it did this morning. And then the actual oscillator and change line right now is reading at 72.46, our low 72.69, uh, I'm sorry, the high today, that's what I'm looking for, 72.40. 72.40 versus 72.46, that test has been done. So as long as on a weekly basis, John, price remains below that oscillator and change line, we can see this test came after the oscillator and change line changed colors. So getting up there, testing, rejecting that is actually a bearish signal. Price right now is trading below what looks like, so it's trading below the center of its profile right now. The center is at 7103, a new weekly profile formed last week. 6718 is support, 7103 is the center. And the top is at 76.17. Now, that is a bullish structure profile. But that oscillator and change line acted as resistance. It just says, the weekly chart says, caution, Will Robinson. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, what do we have out here? We don't have that message. But with regard to bottom patterns out there, never really got one. Maybe I got the confirmation of the buy the D point pattern back here on September 16th. What we can say is on a daily basis, price is trading above resistance. That is the top of its profile. In fact, that's an area that's being tested. So we know we tested weekly resistance out here. Now we're testing daily support. Daily support being 69.85. 
our load so far today, 69.86. Do you need to get to that penny out there? No, we use these as guidelines. But what you want to watch for is that 69.85 level. If price closes below that, John, we should see a move down to 69.01. If we get a close below 69.01, that's a red daily oscillator and change line, we will head lower. Lower, 68.11 would be a target, 65.48 out there. So now let's go back and open up. Those would be the daily and the weekly messages of the market. If I look at the monthly message, which you didn't ask for, that's okay. What we have here is nothing but a big, fat consolidation. The consolidation pattern, you can, I had drawn this in before price got down and tested that low uh, this month out there. So we know that we're just consolidating here. However, the daily and weekly say, you know, we're consolidating, but I may want to get back down and test those lows. If we look for intraday signals. Do we have any kind of a bottom pattern out here? I don't have one on the 30 minute chart. I don't have one on the 60. I don't have one on the 120. We're trading below support on the 240. We're trading below support on the five hour time frame chart. So all of those are suggesting lower price as well. So what you've got to do is you've got to really watch the uh, top of that daily profile out there, and that's at 69.85. So, Mr. Z inside the Tiger's Den, I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for. And as always, thanks for your request. No more requests that I see at this moment in time, but that doesn't mean that we can't find things to do because Stevie can always find something to do. Let's go ahead and close this chart out here. Let's go see what's going on inside the intraday charts for the equity future contracts. Now we're gonna do that mostly we get back from this break here, but here's the NQ. The NQ, we've seen a number of uh, lower, uh, higher lows out here. Um, it's what the NQ is doing, it's dealing with a TD9 count breakdown, a TD9 count top. And that TD9 count top resistance level was the high of August 22nd. And that high out there is 20, 251 and a quarter. That's your real key level to observe. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors for traders who crave risk directions daily leveraged and inverse etfs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade and trade through rapidly changing markets these are highly leveraged etfs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading not long-term investing whether you're a bull or a bear you choose the direction for up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You were taking a look at that. Uh, by the way, it's 842 in the morning. If you're listening live, thanks so much for doing that. If you listen to the recorded show, thanks for doing that as well. We're taking a look at the 60-minute uh, time frame chart for the NQ. We opened up the show today. Take a look at that directional correlation between the NDX100, the NQ, and the uh, DAX. We talked. We looked at the DAX, how it uh, gapped to the downside, and then has been trading higher ever since. Well, the, uh, the, uh, the European markets are opening at 330. If we take a look at what was going on here, at 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, we had price was moving lower as bar number 7. But by 4 a.m., by 4 a.m., we had a TD9 count bottom pattern that was forming. We had bar number 8. We know that the low of a pattern needs to be on a, uh, a bar number 8, 9 of the bar following bar number 9 out there. The very next candle session at 5 a.m. did two things. This is a really great trade setup. I wasn't up looking at it, but if I was, I certainly would have fired away from an intraday trading standpoint. What happened then? We got that confirmation at 5 a.m., and we had a new bullish structured profile that formed. You know, I began using these profiles when uh, Tom brought uh, John Logan on uh, many years ago. I didn't know much about profiles back then. I would really struggle to uh, communicate the message of the markets to you each and every day uh, without having that profile, the profile information for all these time frames. It's really something one should consider consider using out here. This to get that bullish structure profile. And then what took place here at 6 a.m., we had a push to test the buy zone. It got the buy zone because this is, so you got the bottom of the profile at 20.082 and the top is at 20.146. But that center line, the top is where sellers are. The bottom is where buyers period. End of story. The center line is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside that profile. And when that center is closer to the bottom, it's a bullish structure profile. More buyers are lined up. And in fact, we saw that work. Now what we have is prices trading above the uh, top of its uh, profile for a 16-minute time frame. Now there's 16 minutes left in this trading session. Let's assume at this stage here, price does close above 2146. What's that tell us? That tells us to expect and anticipate that the NQ would rally up towards a 2183 three level maybe if we went back and we took a look at the dax you put this in concert with the dax is the dax on the 30 minute basis trade above that green oscillator and change on that we looked at i don't know i gave you the number i didn't write it down because i'm simply narrating the charts as we go along here now as we open up this set of charts out here we don't see any kind of intraday uh, tops out there topping signals 30 minute no topping pattern nor the 15 nor the 10 so the rally should continue inside of the nq but first it's got to close above the top of that profile out there just as i said that it would we had a couple of sellers step in so watch 20 146.60 out there if we do close above that we head up to the 2183 if we don't then i'm uncertain as to what we're doing, because right now we'd just be consolidating inside that profile out there. Let's get a bigger view as to what's going on inside the markets, because we've got mixed signals out here. As an example, let's start with the Dow. Is there a mixed signal out here? Well, if we take a look at it, the only mixed signal, we've got TD9 count tops that completed yesterday inside the Dow equity future contract. That says to watch its high. 42,656 is the number. If we close above that, strong upward momentum move is going on. Price should pull back to test support. 42,352. TD9 count top completed inside the Dow Jones Cash Index yesterday. And he closed above 42,281. Negates that signal and says we continue to move higher. The diamonds did not complete that pattern. Price was unable to close above or tick above, I should say, bar number seven out there. So no confirmed TD9 count top on the diamonds. We do have one on the equal weighted ETF for the Dow. So a little bit of mixed signaling going on there. If we take a look at the, uh, let me just close this down. If we take a look at the next set of charts out here, we start with the NQ. The NQ on the uh, uh, uh the NQ has still got that TD9 count top. It requires a close above 22.51 and a quarter to negate that signal. If that were to unfold, that would then generate an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. The Dow, the I'm sorry, the Nasdaq 100 cash indice 
negated that TD nine count top yesterday. The high was nineteen nine thirty eight eighty nine. We close at nineteen nine forty four. So the cash indice says that we had higher. The NQ says, wait a minute here. The QQQs did not negate their TD nine count top out there, and the uh, QQEW. Um, you know, did not form a TD9 count top yesterday as well. So we've got mixed signals. Is the cash indice the one that's going to uh, give us the piece of information? I don't know. Usually we have these things line up. These did not line up. Let's go take a look at the next set of charts out here. The next set of charts are going to be the S&P signals. The S&P cash index yesterday did complete a TD9 count top. How about the ES Mini? No, it did not. It did not tick above the bar of bar number seven. How about the Spies? No, it did not either. How about the RSP? Well, the RSP actually has a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern of the upside that gives us a, uh, a target of 182. Usually it is the equated ETF that is the one that is pointing the true direction of the market out here. So again, mixed signals, the uh, S&P cash index says that uh, we have a TD9 count top that and price should pull back towards 56.69. However, a close today or anytime above 57, 35, 32 would negate that signal. It suggests that we continue to move higher. Let's finish this out by taking a look at the Russell 2000 charts out here. Now, for it, we're going to take a look at the futures contract uh, and the cash index and the IWM. What do we have out here? We've got an A to, well, we have a negated TD9 count top in the Russell 2000 cash indice. The high from its TD9 count top on August 26 was negated on the trading day of September 19th out there. We take a look at the, and so what is this doing? What is it doing? It's got an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. If it's pulling back, maybe it's going to try to test support it around the 2203 level. How about the equity future contract? Same thing out here. It negated a TD9 count top. Uh, we haven't pulled back yet. We haven't gotten below yesterday's low. We're just trading with inside yesterday's bar, so to speak. So no clear signal there. But we do know support would be around 2230, that daily oscillator and change line. And finally, we take a look at the IWM. The IWM is TD9 count top, which had volume of 24 million shares, was passed with 35 million shares. So the IWM has a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Is it the cash indices for the uh, Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ that are telling us a true message of the markets? I don't know the answer to that. The only way for us to find out would really be start taking a look at the intraday charts. Now, we looked at the NQ's intraday charts. Let's do the same thing for the ES Mini out here. So, whoops, that didn't work. What did Stevie do? Wasn't really paying attention, but we'll get those charts up on the screen out here. And so what we're really watching for, what you'll be really watching for during the day, it's 849 right now. But what's things? what are things doing at 1149? If we start trading below, let's take a look at some support levels for you to watch to the downside. We've already given you what to watch for the upside. So what do I be watching for the downside? One level would be 57.58. That's a bottom of new profile for the five-hour time frame. 57.36, bottom of the 240-minute uh, profile. 57.70, bottom of the 120-minute profile out there. Now, on a 60-minute time frame chart, the ES Mini did not form that TD9 count bottom like we took a look at inside of the NQ. It does have a bullish structure profile, though. So the key area to be watching is going to be 57.81 there for the message of whether that support or support starts being broken. In the case of the 30-minute time frame chart out here, all we have is a new profile that just formed. Support for it is down at 57.83, resistance at 57.91, which was tested so far during this last 30 minutes between 8.30 and right now it's 8.50 in the morning. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will try to figure out uh, what to uh, take a look at as we close out the show. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand 
as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one strain of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Welcome back, folks. It's 8.54 in the morning. We're recording today's show early. You've got uh, U.S. equity futures are trading the downside, but not by much. They're basically flat. S&P's up 2, NASDAQ 20, uh, Dow's down 16, and the Russell's off 10 cents out there. Spot fix still below its 50-day exponential moving average. We're going to close out the show, I believe, by taking a look at high ho silver. This is for Mike inside the Tiger Set. So we talked about the TD9 count top. For its daily time frame, that's going to go ahead and uh, complete today on the bar following bar number uh, nine out there. What price should do is pull back and test support. The first level of support is 31.58. Below that, I'd say about 30.87 out there would be its target. Now, is price going to hit that area? Well, if we take a look at the very bottom row of charts out here, we have bottoming signals for each of these time frames. If you take a look at the 60-minute time frame, what you're going to notice is you're going to notice a TD9 count bottom. That went ahead and completed at 5 o'clock this morning. Now, it has not gotten too much traction, but it did get enough traction to get up to test basically that green oscillator and change on. Currently printed at 32.34. We got up to a high today of 32.32. Close enough for Stevie's work. What you're going to want to watch here, Mike, is that TD9 count bottom. That low out here is at 32.01. If price closes below that, what silver is going to do then is form at least a short-term, small 60-minute uh, A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So if we draw in that... Uh, a to B point out here, we just move that to, in essence, so far the high. That would give us a one-to-one -one price projection if we take out that TD9 count bottom in about the 3172 level. That's not the current message, but it is something to be watching for. If we look at a 30-minute time frame chart, also a TD9 count bottom completed to 4 o'clock. What's low of that pattern? Well, it's going to be the same price, 3201. Now, here you've got price on a 30-minute basis trading with inside its profile. So 3204 is an area of support. But if we close below that low, again, an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. And 3110 would even be open as a potential price target area. The 15-minute uh, chart, again, a TD9 count bottom, so a price closes below that low. Again, the same low out there. We've been looking at a further move to the downside. Now we take a look at the top row of charts out here. Support on a two-hour chart, 3168. Four-hour chart, 3162. 
And right now in the five hour time frame, price is testing support. That's at Osler and Change Line. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Tommy O'Brien is up next, and I will see you back at the normal time tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp. Take care. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Thanks so much for being here.